Hi everyone, this is Matt. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about time management. During my PhD days and my postdoc days, I actually managed to publish in Nature, Nature Neuroscience and Nature Communications. Yes, I was very lucky to manage to do it, but also time management, good time management was absolutely key to accomplish this. So today I want to share with you my top tips for managing your time very well. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe. I'm an ex-academic, ex-supervisor. I used to work in academia for a number of years and then I moved to industry and now I talk about everything PhD related and transition to academia related. So please do subscribe if you want to hear more about these. Right, back to time management. So the first thing you need to do is you need to create a priority list. Do it with your supervisor and prioritize your experiments. Now, you need to look at this list every other week, maybe every month, and make sure that this is still accurate. This is still what you really want to do. So, um, I actually spoke in one of my videos, I'm gonna link it up here, maybe there, I'm not sure, about um, how to create these lists. But they are absolutely key to start with. When you are creating your priority list, you need to bear in mind the 28 year old, which originally comes from finance. So, let's break this down. 28 year old means that 20% of your work, 20% of your overall work, will generate 80% of the results. So you really need to find what is but 20% of your work that is so key that will generate 80% of work. Because vice versa, you might focus on the remaining 80% of work that will only generate the 20% of remaining results. So when you create your priority list, you need to sit down with your supervisor Think about your goals, long-term goals, short-term goals for this week, this month, this year, and so on, and find which experiments are absolutely key to generate the most amount of data. Once you know which 20% of experiments are absolutely key to generate the most of the data, then you need to double down on them. So when you schedule your days, your, you know, your weeks, your months, you really need to prioritize these experiments. This is all it is about. Now, the next step is when you're scheduling these experiments, you need to think about how much time they're going to take you. Now, you know, some people say that, you know, tasks will take you as much time as you give them. So for example, if a task can be completed within a day, or you give yourself three days for it, then it will take you three days to complete it. Um, and that is, that is mostly true, however, obviously you need to be reasonable about it. So you need to figure out how much time it is actually going to take you to complete a task if you're not going to slack, if you're going to work at 100% efficiency. And let's say it's going to take you one day, right? Um, however, I think it will be a bit you know, silly to assume that you will be able to work 100% efficient 100% of the time, right? We're human. We can't do this. Even a machine can't work 100% efficient, 100% of the time. I think the best you can do is to work 70% at your 70% efficiency, right? Because you know you will get hungry, you will need a snack, someone will come, ask you questions, you will need a small toilet break, whatever it is. So I think 70% is really what you can aim for, which means that you should add 30% of extra time to every task. So if you think that the task is going to take you maybe to, to write, you know, this particular piece, um, you know, document, uh, it's going to take you five hours at 30% on top of that, right? So at an hour and a half um, and so on. So first find out how much time is going to take you to finish the task if you are 100% efficient. And then once you have this time at 30% on top. And in this way, you're going to be re reasonable and you're actually going to complete your tasks within the set deadlines. Okay, so now you know how much time it's going to take you to complete tasks. Now, what you really should do is that you should group all the similar tasks together, right? You need to chunk them together. And the reason for that is that actually, as humans, we are not capable of multitasking. I know everyone says, oh yes, I can multitask, I can do five things at the same time. However, as science, as real data tells us, we are not capable of multitasking. What really happens is that you keep switching between tasks, right? So you spend a few seconds on one thing, then you quickly switch to another task, 
spend a few seconds on the other task and you switch back again, right? However, when you keep doing this, you keep distracting yourself and your efficiency goes down. So what I used to do when I was a PhD student and I was a postdoc, I used to group similar tasks together. Um, so I'm a molecular biologist, so for example, um, if I was doing a lot of Western blots, as an example of an experiment, um, then I would make sure that I'm doing all of the Western blots together in one week or maybe two weeks time, right? So everything was um, blocked and in this way, when I was doing experiments, I was fully focused on my experiments, I wasn't distracted by anything else. And what I found really difficult was, for example, to do experiments and write at the same time. Because whenever I sit down to write, I had to get in the zone, get in the mood, and, it would, and I would waste you know, half an hour, an hour, every time I was sitting down to it. Um, also, when I was doing different experiments at the same time, like very different experiments, um, then I was also getting distracted. I was thinking about something else because you know I'm doing this experiment, but then I need to you know think of what I'm going to do for the other experiment. Um, and because we were quite different, I was distracted. I was making mistakes. So let's avoid that. Let's increase your efficiency by grouping similar tasks together. So you don't reach mental fatigue as fast as you would if you had different tasks, and you can actually make fewer decisions, which means you can make, or you need to make fewer decisions so you can make more good decisions and throughout the day you will make less mistakes. When you do these experiments, I'm sure you will end up with some death time. So for example, for a molecular biologist, I would end up with lots of incubation times. So these were literally breaks, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes even two hours, when I was literally waiting for an experiment to move from one phase to the other. Obviously during this time I could start maybe writing or I could start a very different experiment but as I told you it was quite difficult for me to start a different um, task, a quite different task because it would just distract me, I would need to think again, start from scratch and so on. So it wasn't particularly efficient, especially because I had lots of half an hour to an hour breaks. I don't know about you but I can't just sit down and start writing straight away. I probably waste half an hour at least every single time when I start writing because I just need to get in the zone, I need to think about it um, and I can't just switch you know, between the lab mode and the writing mode. I can stay constantly in the writing mode or constantly in the lab mode but not in the two. However, you can use these breaks for the shallow work. So for example, if you need to read emails, if you need to respond to emails that are you know, quite easy to respond to, we're not going to take a lot of your time and a lot of brain power. Um, if you need to make some notes, read a few papers, which are again quite easy and they're not going to take a lot of your brain power, then this is the time to do it. Same for admin work. This is the time to do admin work, right? So that um, you basically alternate tasks that require a lot of your attention. So these are, the, these are your key priority experiments. and tasks which don't require a lot of your attention, right? So you have the deep work and shallow work and you keep alternating them and in this way, again, you don't reach mental fatigue as quickly as you would if I asked you to stay 100% focused all the time throughout the day. And then once you follow all of these, what you really need to pay attention to is all of the distractions. So you need to remove distractions um, and this is really the best way to, you know, to finalize how to manage your time. So I work from home these days um, and it's a real, a real problem for me to get, you know, to pick up my phone and start scrolling through social media because no one is around me. I'm just on my own. I'm working on my laptop and it's just so easy to waste so much time on my phone. So what I tend to do, how I avoid to use social media, it's not by getting, you know, apps that will you know block out these social media applications or you know monitor how much time i spent on my phone none of these work for me what i tend to do is i tend to literally take my phone to another room and then go back to where i work so me and my phone are physically separated and then i forget about it and i keep working whatever works for you maybe maybe you need to get some apps that will monitor your social media use if this works for you awesome if it doesn't work for you just like it doesn't work for me, then just 
separate yourself from your phone physically even whenever you're doing shallow work right the admin sending emails and so on stop wasting your time on multitasking remember you want to group together tasks that are very similar and in this way you actually are very you stay very efficient and you don't waste time i've heard this somewhere and i think it's very true um there's this phrase that goes with the enemy of progress is perfection right enemy of progress is perfection so what it really means is that you are able to complete a task in a day but you're actually going to take three days extra because you want to perfect the task okay so maybe what you've done the results the data you have are pretty good yeah they're pretty good and yeah you could get them a little bit better you could repeat the experiment rerun the code you know work on it again and again um and get them get them about 10 or you know maybe even 20 percent better but this will not change the overall result right so you're wasting your time on perfecting the product the product is fine as it is and you can move on and then later if you need to perfect the product it will be because someone will tell you in the future that actually it's not as clear as, as you think it is right but for now if you and your supervisor are happy with it 80 percent happy with the result and it shows what it's supposed to show then move on go to the next experiment then when you submit your thesis submit your paper for publication then if you have reviewers that tell you could you please repeat this experiment then you will you will get it a little bit better right you will at least try but for now don't waste time to perfect your data to perfect the code and so on it's good as it is and then finally you need to schedule breaks mindful breaks so what i really noticed about myself when i was um, a phd and a postdoc uh, was that i would start making mistakes whenever i was dehydrated i was hungry or i was simply reaching mental fatigue so what i used to do is i used to, sh I used to schedule breaks to sit down to take a breath go for a little walk eat drink go to the bathroom whatever five minutes ten minutes max right because this was as little as i needed to actually recharge a bit and then start again because it's much better to lose five or ten minutes to recharge rather than make a mistake that will perhaps cost you a whole day a whole week if not a month or it will cost you loads and loads of money in consumables and you will lose funding or you know proportion of your funding so these are my tips for how to manage your time better and increase your productivity and increase the efficiency of your work so if you find this helpful please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one